words that will be my favorite till the day I go home to be with God, and that is thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start by way of starting. I got up Friday morning, and my appointment with physical therapy, everybody's like, why did you go to Franklin Foundation? I went for therapy. And I was walking up, lady was walking down, and I, it was a little cool, and I said, I'm glad we got a little meat on our bones, because it's cold. Next thing I knew, I woke up, I'm laid out on the cement, and cement don't get it, okay, it hurts. But anyway, they got people all around me and everything, and uh, they got me, and I really do not remember them bringing me into the hospital. They said they did a CAT scan, I don't remember that. I do remember the uh, EKG. They did one before, they said. My heart rate was 33. They did another one after. My heart still, my heart rate still at 33. My blood pressure was just horrible. And I could still talk then. And they said they had to move me. You know, they wasn't equipped for this over there. And they sent me to Iberia Medical. Well, before, I'm laying on the bed, and I could talk. And the girl said, we're going to pour you onto the other bed that, you know, they put you in the ambulance. I'm trying to look at everybody. But, but anyway, when, from the time I was talking, when I got on the bed, I looked up at the lady. She was standing on this side, and I said, I'm feeling weird. And that was it. My head went down, I could hear them, and I could see some, but not much at all. And all I hear the doctor saying is, y'all need to get her out of here, because we're going to lose her. We're not equipped for this. You know, we're not equipped. She's had a stroke, and she needs to get where she can get help. Well, they sent me to Iberia General. And on the way, they put the big pads. They were waiting, you know, and it's like, hey, to myself, God, you, you know, you got it. But all this time on the ride, I had passed a matter in my mind. And not that, because I know, I know through coming here and <coughs> sitting and him stomping on my toes, I know he is a chosen vessel of God, allowing God to use him the way he is supposed to be used. Well, all I could think in my mind was, if I could just head past him Matt, pray for me. I know he would touch, you know, heaven. But Pastor Matt ain't going to be at Iberia Gentle, Iberia Medical. Well, I'm laying there, and they, all I hear him say is, why they sent her here? We don't have an ICU bed. We don't have a cardiologist. We don't have a neurologist. There's nothing we can do for her. So they bought this screen, and I wind up looking at some doctor who I could barely get my whatever I wanted to say out, and he told them to put that bottle of that, well, you know what it is, I don't know, it's three letters, but it's a blood thinner that you can literally die from it. So papers had to be signed. Randall, who is my ex-husband, very good friend of mine, I let him sign, I couldn't. Well, anyway, <coughs> the lady, what's her name? Alan. Fallon. Fallon, she, when Matt walked in, I'm like, oh, you know, it was just, I knew I felt the power of God when I just, all I had to see was his hair, me, but I knew it was him. I knew it was him. But well, anyway, he came and he prayed. I still couldn't talk. They said, for some reason, my sugar, which I've had hypoglycemia when I was young, thought they grew out of it. Well, they making me, they get me this tube of stuff that, very disgusting. They checked it. They said, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Your sugar will not come up. we got to put some sugar water. So after that, I don't know if it came up or not, but all I know is they said, we can't do anything for you here. You've got to be moved. And you're going probably to Lady Lords. All I was able to get out was, tib, tib. You know, I wanted Thibodeau. But they understood, I guess, because that's where... I wind up going. And on the way there, you know, the lady, because I, I can tell y'all, I, I know I didn't go 
all the way because I didn't see no light. I, you know, I had like in there, I knew something was going on, but I didn't know what it was. I was so weak, I couldn't do nothing. Well, when I get to Iberia Medical and they roll me in, and I'm here because if I could have talked, it would have not been nice, brother. God knew what he was doing, okay? You're going to send somebody to a hospital where you know they can't do anything for them? That's a little crazy. Yeah. But I had no idea he was there. And all the way there, like I say, I'm waiting and I see him. Well, anyway, I, you know, and I'm hearing him talk. Well, what we going to do? What we going to do? we got to get her out of here. Franklin took get in that doctor set, get her out of here now, because she's going to die. Mm, wow. Okay? That was all. He, there was nothing. Well, from New Iberia, I was transferred to Thibodeau. I was put in a holding area, and I did watch the clock for an hour and a half after they put my IV. It was just me and God. So that's all I could do was call on God and talk to him. And... Then a doctor came in and he said, we're having to put you into critical care. I see you, so, you know, it's still not good, but critical care, that's, it's like, mm, okay. And they said, we can't get your heart rate up to over 44. We don't know, you know, what's going on. So they got me in, they did ultrasound, they did MRI, and told me I had had a stroke. And they really, you know, wasn't a lot of hope, but I knew there was. Yeah, amen. Well, all that night, my heart monitor that they had, I watched it, 44, 44, it would go a little lower, 44, didn't want to go up no more than that. Well, anyway, they had already did, they did take me to have a CAT scan and an MRI before going into critical care, so it did. You know, they said, you did have a stroke. You know, that's all they could tell me. Didn't see a doctor that night. Not that night. That I know of, maybe after something I did. I don't know. But anyway, the next morning, my heart rate was still 44. It wouldn't come up. They did test after test because they said with this stuff that I was given, my brain could start bleeding at any moment. Even told me when you go home, be careful. If you start feeling strange, like I had a bad headache today, and you know what I said? Devil, you're a liar. Yes. Leave me alone. Yes. People are not dead. There isn't as much people as I thought would be here, but you know what? Whoever's here, that's who God planned to be. Yes. But anyway, so I'm, you know, I'm laying there and. All night that night, I had the best little nurse, a little male nurse. And he told me, he said, don't even try to talk. Because I tried, not couldn't. And he said, just ring the buzzer, I'm right outside your room. Because it was a one-on-one -on -one in critical care, you one-on-one. -on -one. So I would press the button and I would just grab my head. My head felt like it was going to explode. Wasn't scared, a little. But I knew I was a winner if I went, and I was a winner if I stayed. Because like I told y'all Sunday, and that was only God that me and Shelby were texting each other. And I said, he's still preaching? He said, yeah. I think we made it from Thibodeau in about 15 minutes. Glad Randy didn't get a ticket because we had to pay it. But uh, anyway, the doctor, I, okay, it was that morning. I had some visitors. And then I'm laying there, though, still thinking, oh, I wish I'd see Pastor Matt. Because I know when you got, I'm not saying nobody else in here, okay, don't have God, but you're that chosen vessel, and you just let him do what he's got to do. Well, Edwina, I think she texted me or something, texted me, I don't even remember, but I knew she was coming, and I heard a knock on the door. And when I opened the door, I mean, when they opened the door, I expected to see her. But who I seen first, I, want, I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. So I just, like, when I grabbed his hand, there was, he did not start talking. He started praying, right, Wayne? Started praying. And when I'm telling you, my monitor went nuts. 
It went, some tell me 130, some tell me 140, and them doctors walked in, and I don't remember exactly what you said, but he said what he had to say, and when they turned that monitor and redid it, my heart rate was in the 60s. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm talking. I can talk. I could yeah. not talk. And I was so afraid because that is my first great grandchild sitting right there. How would I have handled that? And I have seven or I think seven more. But how would I handle being around them? They would have been afraid, yeah. you know. But soon, I mean, soon as he got through. And my friend, she's going to be watching this, Leanne. You're going to hear this. She did want to come, but she wasn't able to. I took her to a one accord service years ago, and it was the first time she ever experienced feeling the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And for it, we've been friends 25 years, that was probably about 20 years ago, maybe a little less, I'm not sure. But anyway, when you were praying, I felt, I took my right hand, and it's uh, just reach your hand. She said, I was crying so bad because I fell. And she said, boy, when I grabbed your hand, oh, my God. She said, I felt it. And I said, you felt the Holy yes. Ghost yes. is what you felt. Hallelujah. And she seen, she was there. Edwina was there, Edwina was there the night before. And, yes, yeah, she, you know, and it, it was hard not to be able to talk. But what can you do? Was probably what the probably at one minute you might have said if I would have been sick, like I had started in that prayer room a while ago. If I get to where I get something in myself to follow myself, give me laryngitis if you got to. <laughs> but you know, no stroke, I hope. you know, just laryngitis and shut me up because it's all about God. Amen. It's all about God. Hallelujah. But doctors come in, they tell me, you know. They really didn't know what they were going to do right then. But after he prayed, of course, I didn't see a doctor for a while. They sent me to do two CAT scans within four hours and an MRI. Doctor walks in and he said, it's nothing short than a miracle. <laughs> They said, hey, you could have had a heart attack. Oh, no. Okay, do what you got to do. So it wasn't long. This lady comes in and she does this. I never had one done before, the little ultrasound deal. And we're going to, you would know what pass them out. I don't know. But they shot some medicine, two different things into the vein also after. And she's like, I shouldn't tell you, but. From what I see, I don't see nothing, but it's got to be red by the top, okay? Okay? Do what you got to do. While she is doing this, I get another knock on the door. Okay, oh, wasn't past the mountain. <laughs> but anyway, it was two low nurses' aides, and they said, we're taking you to the second floor. I said, oh, that means I'm going home. They said, eventually, yes, because I had... A stroke in 2021. Okay, not, it didn't do like this. It's bad, but it was bad. Well, anyway, I said, well, let her finish doing what she's got to do. They want to do it. They're not going to find nothing. But that lady, when she walked in that room and I was talking, she cried so bad. Wow. She said, you are talking. I said, God Hallelujah. has touched me. I am a miracle. And when I get out of this bed, I'm going to be a walking talking testimony. Because if I wouldn't have went through that, I couldn't stand here to tell y'all of the goodness of God in my life. Because let me tell you, the devil has tried to take my life many a times, but he didn't get me, and he ain't getting me now. Yes. Wow. So anyway, she finished up. They even sent me with that hoop and all, you know, but that's okay. I'm going to the second floor. So I go to the second floor, 
And the one doctor that was say at the CIS doctor, he walks in, he's like, we had a meeting and we're kind of, you know, a little baffled, but maybe we have a heart attack because we match your stuff in the last three things, which are the CAT scans and the MRI, we're not seeing what we've seen on the previous. I said, because God healed me. Hey, amen. Okay. They put me as far from the nurse's station or anybody else. I was by the back door. I mean, nobody. I got my little feet out of that bed, and I walked up to the nurse's station, and it, was, it took a waste, but it felt good. I was walking, and I was fixing it up. And I said, I'm the miracle y'all talking about. Hallelujah. And praise God. And I turned around, and I went back to my room. The nurses started to come in. The believers. Okay? Not, not all the believers, but I had several of them come. And the last one that came in, she said, this don't happen every day. Hey. But do you know you are a miracle? I said, I know God touched you. Because I was at that store. 33 heart rate. I don't think that's too good. Or 44. Because I couldn't. I mean, you know. But thank you, Jesus. Okay? And so she asked me, she said, did you see Colin? I think that was his name, my nurse from the night before. Because she said, when they leave like that to go home, and they come back to an empty room, it's usually the person has. That's why you're in critical care, because more than likely you're not leaving out of here, is what she told me. And I said, no, they took me down here. I didn't get to see him. She said, well, just a minute. She said, I'm going upstairs, and I'm going to take his place, and I want him to see you. When this little young guy, I don't know his age, but very young, looked about, but he kind of looked like him, too, this little guy right here. And when he walked in my room and I said, Colin, thank you for taking such good care of me. <laughs> that, you know, he was smiling, but he's like, you talking? I said, I'm talking and I'm walking. I said, I'm a testimony. And he, I said, Colin. Are you a believer? Oh, he on. said, yes, ma'am, I am. Hallelujah. Me and my mother go to church together. Hallelujah. I said, well, can I pray for you? Hallelujah. I want to pray. Hallelujah. And he, we, I grabbed his hands, and I just, whatever God had me say, I can't even remember. But I told him, I said, God is going to do great and mighty things in yes. your life. And I said, you see that room I was in? I would like to know. I, I'm going to tip it over more about to Go see the neurologist, but that's part of the plan. So I'm going. But I'm also going into critical care, and I'm going to see if he's working. And you know what? I'm going to walk in there, and I am going to go up and down, and I'm going to tell them all. Remember when y'all told me to go down? Well, I'm back. And I'm walking and talking and I'm a testimony. Only God, only God can do this. Not no man. Nothing. So the I had one other doctor, I guess he was like my attending physician. I don't know that after you had left the third floor where he came in and I gotta put you on this and this and this and it's about four or five prescriptions. I said, I'm not taking them. And he's like, oh. I said, okay, if I got to, I will. But I said, I'm not going to have to. Well, he's the doctor. They called him before they would let me go home. Well, before he came in, my nurse came in, because I already put my pants and my shoes on, because I was going home, but I had a monitor. The nurse walks in, and he said, why are you not dressed? I said, because you ain't come to the monitor. He said, take that thing off and put it on that shelf, and you get dressed. The doctor's in the parking lot, and Randall was in the parking lot to pick me up, so I knew maybe there was a little chance I could get here Sunday. You know, if not, oh, well, tonight was the night. Amen. But anyway, he came in there. Randall had already gotten in there. It was so good for him to come tonight, but, but God. Well, anyway... When the doctor walked in, he said, I'm like, 
the, like you call it, my prescriptions or whatever, you know, it's Sunday, I was just being a little sarcastic, but I was so glad I was talking. He said, we had a meeting yesterday. I never seen another doctor after that, uh, that day before, it, after that one, um, you know, you talked to. So anyway, he said, we match your last three tests. And he said, he said it himself, it's nothing short of a miracle. Amen. They do happen, but we don't see it. I know you believe it's all I'm going, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going in that hospital. That I may, I can't go in the rooms, but I can sure put out my hand. Hallelujah. And I can pray over every one of them. That if it's God's will to take them, don't let them suffer. But if it ain't, let them pop up out of them beds and get out of there. And I just thank God. Like I said, my favorite words, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Because I really didn't think that it had came out. And then I realized, whoo, I'm talking. I'm yes. talking. And my monitor, my heart rate never went out of the 60s. It stayed once you left. Praise it God. stayed. Hallelujah. And I want to tell y'all, I thought. I, and I told Pastor Matt about it. I had came here a couple times, and one Sunday I'm like, I want to go, but I don't want to go after the little incident. You know, I tell you about, you know, with you and Edwin or whatever, you know. I don't think I want to go there. But uh, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all about it because I don't want y'all to think I'm saying the incident. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> Edwin was sitting there, and I was sitting on the chair next to Kylie. And Pastor Matt went down to her, and I heard him say, Sister, and I couldn't catch it all, but you know, I caught enough of uh, be here at five. We're going to try to keep it a little, uh, like everybody's invited, but we're going to try to keep it a little, you know, I don't know if he said simple. I don't remember the words, but it was enough. And this was before service. And I'm going to tell y'all, I held on to that chair with everything I had, because I wanted out of here. I said, the preacher's even a click. I don't go to church because of clicks. That's why I stopped years ago, because of clicks. And here, oh, Lord, and then he's going to invite my daughter, but not me, you know. So I, I really felt... And I, I had, you know, I was talking to Edwin, and she's like, oh, well, Mama, we, uh, something about y'all, book study. Yeah, book study. But all I heard was everybody's invited, but we want to keep it, you know, a little. So it's like, hmm, I'm good enough to come sitting here, and I'm not bragging, y'all. I have not paid tithes. they probably five, seven years, or maybe longer than that, because I had been always out of church for a while. And I'm single, I live on a fixed income, but praise God, my home's paid for, I have a beautiful brick home, my, house, my car's paid for, but I live on a limited income. And I'm like, God, why do you want to, he had to mention something one morning about tithes, and then this brother when he talked had to mention it, you know. So it's like, Okay, God, you know I really can't do this. And I, when I got home that day, well, no, I wrote the check out right here because I really felt bad because he was praying and I'm writing the check, but I'm trying to obey God and I didn't want to, you know. And I want to tell you that God is showing himself in mighty ways in my life. Amen. And I am so grateful for every one of y'all. Danielle, Danielle, I said, somebody asked me, is it Danielle, Danielle? I said, it's one of the two, but I really don't know, but she answers to the one for me. <laughs> Her, Matt, Chris, I miss, where's his name? Aaron? Yeah, yeah. Your I think he's offshore. Okay, and Miss, uh, Angela. Angela, yeah. Well, I was at assembly with them a long time ago, okay, and... They were always such wonderful, wonderful people. And Edwina used to tell me how 
good of a Sunday school, you know, because she loved going to your class. Well, I didn't realize Wednesday was night. Wednesday, Wednesday night. I thought it was no, Sunday. Well, Wednesday night. But I didn't feel smart enough to be around him. He just, <laughs> to me, I felt like, you know, hey, I'm a, I'm a little lower class, you know, in that way. I only went to the seventh grade, but I'm not stupid, you know. But from the day she would tell me, it's like, whew, I don't think those words would kind of sink in my head. And little did I know, I would be under your ministry. And I can tell y'all, I am here until God calls me home. Because I can tell you, I'm not doing nothing to get kicked out of here. And no way, there's no way. So y'all can't vote me out, y'all can kick me out, and y'all can't roll me out. And I'm going to tell you, I am going to call for God. And I'm going to tell you, not everybody, except I had one nurse that came in. And I said, God healed me. I'm a miracle. He turned around and he shut my door. Don't shut me in a room. I don't like closed doors. So I got up and I opened my door. And the next time he came, you know, something told me in my spirit, you know, not everybody's going to receive this. That's spirit. right. That's right. I, all I told him was, I said, I wish to share with you. I was at death's door. I'm going to tell you. And I said, God bought me out. And I'm not trying to, you know, push nothing on you that you don't want. But I just want you to know God is real. Now, I planted the seed. God's going to water it. I don't have to do nothing else. And I guess that's it. But I'm going to share one other thing. Because, oh, wait. God, when I got up this morning, well, he called me, y'all. Uh, quarter to three, I think it was, something like that. And I said, hello, who's this? And all I heard was Tazmat. Like, Tazmat? Who are you with? What? You know, I know a Tazmat. I think that's like something bad. And he goes, Pastor Matt. I'm like, oh, okay, Pastor Matt. I'll talk to you, but Tazmat? I'm like, I don't owe no bills or nothing, so you know I never heard of that. But I thank you for calling me, and I told you, I said, I'm going to lay down while I was in my recline. I think I'm going to take a little nap. And he told me, he said, well, I got a scripture. I said, well, I got a scripture. <laughs> you know, I, I did. When I was doing my devotion, I got up, I got my coffee, and it was only God, and I'm going to read it. And I know it was for me, and I pray it touches y'all. Proverbs 4, 25 and 26, and this is out of the NIV. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet. And be steadfast in all your ways. And this popped up right after, so it's like, okay, Lord. It says, in the same way. Solomon is telling us in this proverb that we have to keep our eyes fixed on what is before us if we are going to stay on the path of righteousness. Yes, yes. We shouldn't think carefully. Oh, no, wait, wait. We should, should, and I can say it clear. We should think carefully about the path on which our feet are taking us. As we keep our gaze fixed on what's ahead. Of course, verse 27 implies that if we fail to keep our gaze straight before us, we will inevitably swerve off the path and drift towards sin and wickedness. Help us, Lord. And I was saying, okay, I was saying. And I can remember years ago, it was Sister Donna. What was her husband at? Brother Steve and Sister Donna. Sister Donna spoke one night. And it was about, she said, I don't know why I'm saying this, but God told me to tell y'all, don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. You need to look straight ahead. Yeah. Because if you're looking at Pastor Brad, he's a man. He's going to fail you. We all 
We are all human, just like I thought you read baby. But thank God you didn't with me, you know, the little talk. I'm sorry, you just, I'm so glad, you know. But God gave me this this morning. And like I said, it was straight for me. Because I know I was in the bars. I had friends, they didn't come see me in a hospital. Keep me in prayer because, I mean, yes, he, you know, he's fighting, but, but God, you know, God got my back, he got my top, he got my sides, he's got me in a little box right now, you know, that's how I feel, but I want to thank y'all, like I said, and I ain't going nowhere, y'all still. Right after he called me, we talked as Matt. Well, anyway, my doctor's office called, my family doctor. And the girl's like, Sue, how you feeling? I said, I feel fine. So you feel fine? So you didn't sound good when I talked to you the other day. I said, well, because I wasn't feeling good the other day. She said, well, look, I got all your records. And Dr. Meeks wants to know if you can come in an hour early. Because he needs to go over some stuff with you. That stuff he ain't understanding. <laughs> so I, I'll probably lay hands on him. Yeah. 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 Y'all pray for him. Y'all pray for him.